Well, preseason game number one is in the books. Let's review some of the things that we saw, some of the things we didn't like on this episode of From the Cheap Seats after the intro. Hey, welcome back to From the Chief Seats. I'm your host, Bonafide, and let's take a little look at this past weekend's postseason matchup between the Bears and the Titans. Unfortunately, we ended up losing 23 to 17 to the Bears, but who really cares? It's a preseason game. So, but as we all expected, Malik Willis got the start uh, at quarterback during the preseason game, and he actually ran a series with the ones. Uh, the first, when I say the ones, I mean the first string offensive line. Uh, we'll come back to that group in a minute as a whole, but that actually that drive that was an opening drive went for 12 plays and ended up in a rushing touchdown by Malik. <laughs> now this rushing touchdown, there was a flag on it. But what I realized when I was watching it over again is that Malik juked the defender so hard it looked like Chris Moore was holding. So yeah, Malik still got that juice, things like that. So and then for like the rest of the game, you know, Malik and, and Levis traded, you know, series throughout the game, and I. I feel like both of them had all right games. They had some ups and they had some downs. Levis had some really nice throws. You can really tell that Levis has a really quick release. I mean, it comes out there in a hurry. Uh, Malik went 16 for 25 with 189 and an interception, but he had a rushing touchdown. And Levis went 9 for 14 with 85 yards uh, and a pick. So um, the quarterbacks, you know, it is what we expected. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but Tajay Spears, man, I, I, I mentioned this in my, my preview. I really wanted to see Tajay Spears. I hadn't heard a lot about him coming to camp. You know, it was just like normal news. But man, like he had like a little coming out party in this joint because on that first drive, he was paired with Willis. So he was like the starting running back. for the, And man, behind that offensive line, the, the, the ones, he had some nice little runs. He had, he showed you the burst. He showed you his cutback ability. He showed his vision. Uh, he even showed a little baby stiff on because he stiff on the mess out of Eddie Jackson uh, uh, on one of those runs. So he did. He did. He had like six attempts. He had, I think he had like 32 yards. He had some nice runs. So I'm definitely excited. I was definitely glad to see that. That was like one of the high points of that that drive. He kept it alive. Uh, uh, he extended some of the drives just by, you know, converting on some of those second and longs, third and longs. So, yeah, definitely. Ty J Spears was a bright point of this game. Um, the Bears, like we thought, were going to play some of their ones. They played Justin Fields, DJ Moore, Khalil Herbert. A lot of their ones played against our defenses, twos and threes. And it went as, you know, as you could expect it. You can tell the level of competition right there. If you look at Fields' stat lines, that's going to give you, you know, how lopsided this was. The man was three for three for 129 yards and two touchdowns. And he had a screen pass to DJ Moore that went for like 62 yards. And then he had another screen pass for, to Khalil Herbert that went for like 50 some odd yards. And those were your two touchdowns. And that was a wrap for them. So Bears fans were all excited because they were all, all, all whatever. It was against our twos and threes. So that's why I really wasn't worried about it. After, you know, the, the competition kind of came to a level set, you could really see that the defense was kind of out there hawking the ball, some really nice tackles. I think we had like four turnovers. Trey Avery got a pick of PJ Walker in the game, and we we recovered a couple of fumbles. So yeah, you know, definitely was a it was a good good to see that game to see them hitting somebody else, things like that. Obviously, a few other things were uh, not so good in the game, and we'll talk about those in a minute. So my stock up and stock down. We all see the stock up, stock down. But let me give you my my take on it. So stock up, Tajay Spears. Man, look the man. In them six reps that he had, showed us what we saw at Tulane. He was running with the ones, so that, you know, you got to put that in there. He's running with the ones. He kind of proved why we were kind of excited, why people were buzzing about Tajay being here. You know, he showed that burst, that speed, you know, and I really think he's going to be a compliment to Derrick Henry. I, I feel like that is going to be a nice one-two punch out of the backfield um, like that. And, you know, Mike said he's going to give uh, him some more work this week that sound you hear in the background is the weeping of all the people who said he wasn't going to be anything because they just found out like everybody else that he didn't have an acl on his knees yeah he put those that to rest i don't want to hear nobody come up i don't want to see your tweets on blocking you 
because the ACL thing is a non-factor. Stock up, Malik Willis. Now, Mike and all of Coach London, Tim Kelly, a lot of people raved about his glowing improvement that he showed during the offseason. Now, and, and, and even in training camp, they said, oh yeah, he's looking better. Now, what we wanted to see is that during this game, did it show up? And yeah, he looked more comfortable in the pocket. He was making good throws with anticipation. And I know there's one that he would like to have back, that one that Josh Wild, where it was kind of like 50-50 on that. You know, he threw the ball too high, it sailed on him. Josh Wild, he's 6'7", and he got his hands on it. I would expect, you know, catch that thing but that's neither here nor there so it's on there so those are the kind of things that he can improve on yeah he had a pre-snap penalty on the first drive which kind of still shows you that hey yeah he's still maturing still in the in in thing and maturing in the process but he really looked like light years better than he did last year this time obviously he was just kind of using his natural ability, but some of the timing, staying in the pocket, seeing, knowing when to run, when not to run, definitely his stock has risen up here. He's, you know, if he continues this, he's gonna solidify that QB2 without any any question. But, you know, there's improvement from what we saw last. Stock up. I don't know if you're on Twitter, and I don't know if you, you saw the game, but this dude, Eric Garver, this dude is simply going to make the team because he is a sure-handed Tackler. I watched him on several Bears possessions just come up in space one on one and make a tackle. Now it wasn't like a big hit or you know, you know, you got jacked up kind of hit, but it was a good, solid either a shoestring tackle, say that five times fast, or, or just a solid tackle, you know, things like that. So, and that's what you need, especially I, he's a DB, especially how your DBs, especially wearing number 33. Shout out Mike Griffin. But he did, you know, he, he he made it solid and he kept showing up. So, I mean, that's how you make that's how you make the team is showing up. Eric Gurr really stood out to me as one of those dudes that's like, hey, man, this dude came to play and he came to, you know, make, you know, his name known in the thing. For every up, there is a down. Down. The linebacking core. Now, for whatever reason, I feel like this linebacking core is lackluster. Uh, nothing really stood out and I don't really think they did anything bad, you know, even though, you know, you know, Gibbies was out there, uh, Chase Campbell was out there, I think Ben Neven was out there, um, and, and Monty Rice, um, but it's just, you know, it was like, uh, you know, I, you know, I didn't see anything dynamic now, you know, it is a preseason game, so I really, they're not scheming for anything, there's not, but still, I didn't really see anybody that popped off on, on, on the screen, at least to me. And, you know, even Mike said he was talking about Otis Reese. You know, I finally found out what his number was, 41. But Otis Reese, he seemed to have a, a, a high motor, some speed he was going to the ball. But for me, it was just like, ugh, meh. So maybe it was just the, the game they were playing, that they were doing. It was just, you know, people trying to knock the cobwebs off. But, yeah, it just didn't seem that interesting. Now, Vrabel said that Chance Campbell had, you know, showed some speed, you know, albeit on special teams, but they just seem overall slow to the ball. Now, I'm, I'm not going to say that I'm the film is my strong point because I'm just a fan, but they just didn't seem dynamic to me. They didn't like pop off the screen in this game to me. Maybe that's just positive, you know, just the result of the game and what we were doing, but yeah, didn't pop off. So definitely, you know, there's trending down on that. Maybe they can, you know, come and fix that moving forward. Down, the entire backup offensive line. Let me tell you, this group was so bad that I had to pull them out of this segment and give them their own segment. So this is the segment we about to talk about here. Brothers and sisters of the section, let me preach to you for me. We might have a problem on our hands. And, and I'm, what I'm saying is that it, it's not one that's not unfamiliar to other teams and, you know, other teams across the league that don't face this. But on Saturday, <laughs> them twos and threes was getting manhandled all day long. I mean, it was it it was getting bad. It was getting bad. I think I tweeted about it. It was getting it was getting. So there's this one defensive end for the Bears, Tra Travis Gibson. That man in that back in that game, number 99, had five tackles. One was a sack, three QB hits, eight QB pressures. The PFF Pro Football Focus gave him an 82.3 grade, and he had a 21.9% pass rush win rate. He was in the backfield all day. It, it was kind of getting ridiculous. Will Willis and Levis were sacked four times each. Now, before you say, well, you know, the hill, yes, I know. They were holding on to the ball too long. Their internal clock 
wasn't clicking and they weren't getting rid of the ball intact or wasn't using their legs and things like that. But, you know, so we're going to put that on them. But the other onus is on the actual offensive line. These are twos and threes, you know, they, they were, shoo. Now, I get it. Maybe some of the Bears ones were in there. I don't know. I really don't follow the Bears. So they're not even out of division, even in our conference. So I really don't follow them. So I don't know if they're some of the people that were playing were some of their ones or expected ones or twos. But it 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 was it was bleak out there. Uh, my homie uh, football and other F words. He had a tweet. I'm going to throw it up on the board. But he said the tightest QBs needed to get their average time to throw down. That's what we were talking about before. Took about um, 3.18 seconds for Malik and 3.10 seconds for Will. It it was just too long that you got to get out of there. Now, from the sack perspective, Levis was uh, out of the eight sacks that we have, only two are what we consider cover sacks, meaning that there everybody was covered up and there was nowhere to throw and then the, 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 the front, you know, the front seven got to him. Um, and one of those other sacks was attributed to Levis himself. He may have stepped up in the pocket or rolled out and kind of run, ran into a sack. But the other five sacks were just solely on the offensive line. Zach Johnson had two. MPF, yes, he was getting those two and three reps, even though he's considered a starter. He had one attributed to him. Xavier Newman Johnson had one. And Jalen Duncan, who's a rookie, had one too. So I said all that to say this. This has got to be fixed. And I don't know how you can fix it because, yes, these are the twos and the threes. So you really, depth is a, a, a premium around the league. This is why they get paid hundreds of millions of dollars because they are key to the game. Uh, but we got to fix this death problem because injuries, unfortunately, are a major part of the game. And last year, we saw what happens when you lose key pieces on your offensive line for games at a time. We lost, like I said, we lost Ben Jones. We lost Taylor Lewan. We lost uh, uh, Nate Davis. Uh, you know, er at one point in time, key players were out due to injury and you know what that has. Like I said in the Tannehill video, the offensive line gelling together is going to be important. And if some one of those dudes goes down, we have to plug and play in that regard. So if there's anything positive that you can take away from this is that these were mostly rookies and backups. So it is what it is in that regard. Um, and the ones when they were out there for that one series with Willis and, and, and uh, uh, Spears where they went down the field. And that 12 play driver and scored that rushing touchdown. They looked good. It didn't, it didn't, I wasn't as concerned, things like that. They looked like they were playing together. They, they got like, you know, Virgil said they got some push, pile push in that regards. They had some open holes because obviously, uh, you know, Spears was able to make those, you know, cuts and runs and things like that. So we're going to temper our expectation, but it, it wasn't a good, warm and fuzzy feeling. Uh, to see this this happen for or to the backups things like that but you know next week we're going to be against the, the vikings and hopefully you know we'll see some market improvement when we run those people you know that groups or those sections again but other than that if, if it looks like more of the same if i keep seeing those tweets more of the same in, in training camp again especially in this joint practice we might need to worry we might need to worry a little bit now for this section, we're going to call it bona fide banter. So this is uh, things that I noticed during the game uh, that I that, that stuck with me and I wanted to talk about here. You know, because look, man, I'm a fan. I mean, I'm, I don't have a blog. I'm not doing game and film analysis. This is just what I see with my own two eyes when I look at the highlight reels and when I looked at the game myself. Uh, Tajay Spears, uh, that boy going to be running back too. Um, he is definitely the change of pace back we've been looking for. Now, Derek is still going to be Derek. King going to stay the king. But putting a weapon like Spears with him, mm, it's gonna be it's gonna be Chef's kiss. I'm it, it, Spears is going to be nice, especially if Tim Kelly. Now, this is this is bona fide fan bona fide. If there's a way we can find to put Hopkins, Burks, Chig, Henry, and Spears on the field at the same time, boy, that's gonna be a nightmare for some defenses. I, I, one can only wish hopefully they show a little bit more we don't know but I'm, I'm really hyped especially seeing the performance of spears right there i was i, I was locked in but my, my man's was my man's was putting in work so speaking about the running backs i think the running back room is going to be king henry spears and chestnut you know Haskins scored a yeah, big whoop he was like a one yarder things like that but outside of that I, I really don't think he offers you anything and this is in my opinion that you can't get from chestnut and or spears uh, and Jonathan Ward, I, I mean, I, I saw a few runs, but I didn't really see anything that jumped out. 
Um, he might be on the outs outside looking in and he might be on the practice squad. But I, I really think right now, I, I feel strongly that Henry Spears and Chestnut are going to be your one, two, and three backs on there. You know, maybe Haskins makes it because he can play special teams too. But yeah, I think that's your one, two, and three right there. What in the world was going on with Chris Moore this game? He need to go to the equipment manager. I need to see this in the Tennessee Titans blog, blog next week of Chris Moore or going to the equipment manager and either getting some stick em on the side or some new gloves. Whatever he had on it wasn't working because that man lost a rock not once, but twice on Saturday. And it was coming. I was like, well, dang, do we want to go back to Chris Moore? Now, he made the catches. He had nice little runs. The first one he got bumped. But I mean, hey, Chris, se secure the ball, my boy. Secure, secure the ball. Is Monty Rice going to make this team? Um, that boy plays seven snaps in a preseason game. Usually in a preseason game, if you're not a starter, you're either on the sidelines or if you're in that two on, on the twos, scratching the ones, you're going to get a lot of reps. That man got seven reps. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven reps. That ain't looking good if you're trying to make the squad. So maybe it was just the way the game plan came out, but I know he was out there. He could have played more snaps. But, you know, it looks like Gibby's, Gibby, Neiman, and, 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 and Chase Campbell's above him. So is, is Monty going to make the team? I don't know. Coming to a close on this episode of From the Chief Seats, and we're going to talk about next week. So next week is Vikings Week, Joint Practice Week. Um, we are going to be in Minnesota. In the Minnesota. Is that how they do it? Minnesota. Uh, at the Joint Practices with the Vikings before Saturday's preseason game at 7 o'clock on the 19th. Now, this is really what you want to see because, yes, it's practice. So we're going to get some individual periods, things like this, but one-on-ones. It's going to be between, you know, our, our DBs and their wide receivers, Justin Jefferson. <sighs> Did anybody else get tired of the NFL flag commercial that kept showing over and over and over? And oh, I get it. I love Metro Boomin. I love the superhero track. But that commercial, they got to put some else in there. Sprinkle me some dog food commercials in there. But, but I digress. Justin Jefferson is the absolute playmaker. He's going to be there. So I want to see how our DBs look against their wide receivers, their offensive plan. How does the you know, front seven look against their offensive line? How does Kirk Cousins look? How does Tannehill look? How does Wills look when there is these people? Now, now we get into people that don't know your name, can't drop you off after practice. They're not rooming with you in the hotel. It's, it's a little bit different. So this this is going to be a key week. I'm going to be following it on Twitter, be retweeting. I might even do another video in the middle of the week before we do our uh, preview for the Vikings game. But we got to really see these cornerbacks in this defense. You know, is the Chris Harris effect? Is, is, it, is it working? So, um, yeah, that's definitely what I'm looking for. So that's going to be happening all week. I think they may be traveling. They may probably be practicing Monday. It's four days. So they probably going to play Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday all Friday because the game is Saturday in Minnesota. Uh, so yeah, definitely looking at for, forward to that. So this is the end of this episode uh, from the Chief Seats. I'm glad you could be here. I'm glad you were in the section. Um, later on this week, we're gonna drop another one for the preview for that Vikings and Titans game. We're gonna talk a little bit more about that, but make sure you like, make sure you comment, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Tell your fellow fans that there's plenty of room in the section for them. So head on and hit the subscribe button. Come over here and join us as we do this all season long. Shout out to the Morris label for the beat in the background. But uh, thank you for joining us today. And we hope you enjoy the show. Tighten up.